So, welcome back to tier three now of the greens. And if you remember in the last video, we were talking about most of these sort of tier three things are sort of self-explanatory, unlimited stations, faster tracks, faster switches, turnouts, points, even more contract offers, you know, way more contract offers. Um, but the main one really is this routing sensor. So most of the others are kind of easy to explain, but let's start with the routing sensor. And once you unlock this, you can pretty much carry on and do everything else in the game, obviously with unlimited stations if you want and the faster tracks. The red stuff is kind of a little bit different and is mainly more about shunting and stabling trains, which mostly relates to regional trains and freights. Although you can use the shunting sensor with intercity trains, it's not common to do that because of the time delay it would take to shunt with it. So we'll kind of ignore these for now. We have separate videos for the red stuff anyway. But here I've unlocked the routing sensor. And let's just remind ourselves, if we look down here, we can see a station at Tutsing which has departure sensors. Now a departure sensor is able to route. So that's kind of cool. But of course it can only route to the signals adjacent to the station. So if you wanted to use the departure sensor, for example, to say... Uh, trains to Richtung Cochelle need to go down here and trains to Richtung Wilhelm Sud need to go down here then you wouldn't be able to have these intermediate signals you would, wouldn't be able to have that signal and you need to get the departure sensor to basically route all the way to the platform all the way to that platform and the problem with having long sections is then you're locking out a large section of track while a train behind might be waiting to depart so you're reducing the capacity of your network to handle those trains. Now, normally you increase capacity by adding intermediate signals, little blocks here, which allow trains to follow closely behind, but then you're gonna lose the ability of that departure sensor to do the routing here in order to send trains this way or this way. Now, when I first set this up, I avoided the problem by simply only allowing trains that depart to Richtung Cochel. In other words, trains that go straight down here, and I just had a simple relay sensor here, which would trigger the signal to go straight on. So it didn't matter if the train came in from here, that bit worked okay, but when it went out, it had to leave at that station. Now on level two, in order to get to tier two, in order to get to tier three, you have to get up to 25 trains on time per hour. And I was struggling a little bit, single, single line, single line, and the ones that we started with, uh, these are both single lines as well. So your capacity is limited significantly just by that fact. And then when I unlock this station, um, it's kind of saying, oh, I want to go to, you know, stations that are miles away and they weren't really doable. So this wasn't much good for me. So I kind of needed to increase the capacity at this part in order to get my 25 trains. So I had to work out a way to route trains this way or that way. And I did this, which is a little trick, which sometimes works if you have space. So what I do is I get the departure sensor to route into one of these two lines, depending on whether the train's heading that way or that way. Now, why is that useful? Well, in this example, I set um, trains going to Richtung Cochel go into the right-hand line, and trains to Richtung Wilhelm Sud go in the middle line here. It doesn't really matter which way around they are, but that's just the way I did it. And then what I do is I get this relay sensor here to trigger that signal to go this way, and I get that relay sensor to trigger that signal to go this way. So that's how I kind of cheat the routing. But because I've also added these signals, I also need a relay sensor here to set this signal this way or this signal this way. But basically it's kind of a, a little bit of a cheat. And we only need it because we didn't have the routing sensor. So the routing sensor kind of gives you the functionality of the departure sensor, but anywhere that isn't inside a platform. So that's kind of what the routing sensor does. The initial state of it just allows you to direct trains based on their next station destination. So that's the one I'll demonstrate in a second. If you eventually unlocked the advanced routing sensor, which I think is a red option here, advanced routing sensor, it also enables you to say, for example, freight trains go on this line, intercity trains go on this line, 
Uh, and that can be really useful if you've got long stretches of track and you don't want the freight trains and the commuter trains to slow down the intercity trains. If you can build four tracks, two in each direction, you can get the advanced routing sensor to send the intercities on the fast line, regional trains on the fast line, and everything else on the slow line. So anyway, I can now deconstruct this now that I've got the routing sensor. So again, remember pause when you're doing building work so you don't get any surprises. And I don't actually need the loop anymore at all because that was only introduced to give us that flexibility. Um, I also am not going to need my relay sensor, either that one or that one. And I'm going to add a perpetual circuit here. Now, the only thing I need to add, and I think I'm going to move these slightly um, because they're a bit spread out a bit weirdly. OK, that should do. Uh, I'm going to choose my routing sensor, which I've already unlocked at tier three. Uh, quite expensive, but um, yeah, very useful. I'm going to put it fairly early because once I upgrade these tracks to 120 kilometers an hour, we'll want to trigger this signal sooner. And once we get out of there, this configures in a very similar way to the departure sensor. So first of all, you choose your routing sensor and tell it which signal you're actually talking about. And then you're saying, I want to go this way for that. These are all left clicks, by the way. Left click, left click. And just like the departure sensor, if you have maybe one station off here and everything else down here, instead of clicking all of the stations, you can just tick that and say all others. Um, you don't use the finished so often on a routing sensor, although you can. It's more common to use that on a departure sensor. And that's useful for if you get your urban transit trains. So by setting out this way, setting the routing sensor and configuring it just like the departure sensor, I can now get these trains to run automatically with much less you know complexity in the routing uh, i need to make sure those are enabled uh, like that and then you can kind of see probably what's going to happen here let's just speed it up a little bit so that's going to go into platform one and now what should happen when it reverses and comes back is it will be sent down there like it was before but when it hits the relay sensor, uh, the routing sensor it triggers that to send it down to this station so a lot cleaner a lot slicker and these routing sensors, you'll use them at anywhere where you have a junction that isn't by a station. So if you've got a junction by a station like here, um, you can use the departure sensors to do that routing. But if you have something like here, let's imagine these tracks go into the station here, then coming out, you'd need a routing sensor to say, send the trains this way if they're going to Vestklaus, or send them this way if they're going to Gauting or... Uh, Starnberg or Tutsing. Unusually for um, a rail route map, some of these stations have space to put bypass lines. So you'll need to just think about um, configuring your sensors properly. But the routing sensor, like I say, is going to give you everything that you need. And it's, yeah, it's going to make, make your life completely easier than it was before. So that is the routing sensor. So let's have a quick look here. The other one I said I would quickly demonstrate are these, but again, um, they're kind of self-explanatory. You can have one of them or all three of them. And what happens with the contracts manager, so there are three, structural, financial, and regional, is you get to go into the contracts uh, manager, keep forgetting which one it is, and I've unlocked uh, the regional section of this. So I've unlocked the bit that says, I only want offers going to a certain station. So what I could do now that I've built the line all the way up here, I could say I want contract offers that are going to take me to oh, so that's pacing or passing. Um, so that's fine. Uh, it won't get rid of existing offers. So you'll have to then go and get rid of all of those, get rid of all of those. But the next ones that appear, the only ones that will appear will be the ones that are locked down by this. Now, the structural ones allow you to choose a type of train. So if you say, look, I, I only want commuter and intercity, um, or I only want commuter trains, then you can tick those once that's unlocked. And financial, which I don't use as often, allows you to say, look, I don't want, you know, a thousand or two thousand dollar contracts. They're, they're a waste of time. Uh, you know, I want five thousand, six thousand dollar ones instead. So you can set those things as well. Um, I sometimes use it if I feel like a part of my map is a bit quiet. 
like here at the minute, there's nothing that goes further north than Tutsing because I've only just built this, of course. So by adding that filter, it just stops me having to cancel down all of the contracts that I don't want. So that is tier three. Now at tier three, because I've unlocked unlimited stations, as my money's now building up, I can start expanding the map, but I still have to be careful with intercity trains. So I mentioned this in an earlier video, especially on a really large map like this. An intercity train has a locomotive at the front only, whereas the commuter trains, they kind of show a locomotive at both ends, although it's not a locomotive, but that means commuter trains can reverse and run at the same speed forwards or backwards. An intercity train can't. It can only run at full speed, which is 200 kilometers an hour, when the locomotive is at the front. And if, let's say, you brought an intercity train up here with a locomotive at the front, and then you sent it back down here, it will leave with the locomotive at the rear and it will only go 40 kilometers an hour. So then you're gonna probably cause a lot of congestion as it takes ages and ages to get all the way back down here. So it's not good enough just to take an intercity train into a station, you have to turn it round. And you have a number of options, they all take different amounts of time. I think I cover this on one of the other videos. You can make a loop so you could have a, a, a track that goes around here comes back round it goes into platform three for example and then that would turn the train round it could then leave and go that way um, that might be quite quick but here you're going to have a lot of tracks going each way and everywhere so that might also get in the way of other services so that may or may not work another thing that you can do is quite simply find a way to take the train onwards to some kind of other external station Although, as you can see, this map is so massive um, that that's not always going to be an option. And unusually for Germany, the Hauptbahnhof, or the main station, is a terminal station. So trains can't leave here. So if you bring an intercity into here, you're not going to be able to take it onwards. And you're not going to be able to take it around a loop. So the third option is a reversing triangle, which is used in real life sometimes to turn a train around. And it would go something like this. I'll just kind of draw draw one in. Um, so let's say you've got your line coming in here into the platform, and then you would have a way to basically do you know something like this, uh, something like this, and then maybe something like that. So you'd pull the train in, and then once it's ready to depart, you'd have to reverse it into here, then reverse it again into here, and then reverse it back into the, the platform, and then it will be facing the right way. Um, now, this is quite slow. It's only going to go 30 kilometers an hour at shunting speed. You will need a shunting sensor and the shunting commands in order to automate that because you don't want to do that manually. So that's another problem. And as you can see, it's conflicting a bit with these platforms up here. So, uh, you know, it might restrict you to only doing it on maybe some platforms down here where there might be some space where you're not getting in anybody's way. So um, a triangle is another way of doing it. Um, the other thing you'll need to think about is the timetabling because obviously uh, the trains will be scheduled to maybe arrive at 10 and leave at 10.01. Um, but if they're going to leave at 10.01 and then have to reverse and come back into the platform and then leave, then you're going to have to adjust the timetable for the stations further along to make sure that that extra time isn't going to cause you a problem. And the other problem I've seen on this map is if you look at uh, some of these stations, so if you look at that one, it says that none of these train types are served by the station. Now that seems weird because you think, why have a station if there's no traffic there? But it doesn't mean that these trains won't stop there. It just means this will not be the start or end point of a contract. So if we get a contract, say from here up to passing, which is you know just at the top up here, then a commuter one will be scheduled to usually stop at um, Gauting, Starnberg and Tutsing as well. But Basically, there's no point putting a scheduler office or conductor office or whatever here because you won't be offered anything directly from this station. Uh, that's part of the reason why I nearly hit my station limit at tier two and was struggling to get my 25 trains. But now I've unlocked that, that should all go away. And that should be enough to get you going for most of it uh, until we get to the red videos, the videos about the red options, which I've done on a, a separate map. So I've done it on a map which is a bit more developed 
so that these things are ready to go uh, and easier to, to demonstrate. So I will see you in that video. And if you have any questions, comments, anything like that, please put them in the comments box below.